Welcome to Gateway Church Leeds, part of Christ Central Churches and the family of New Frontiers. Good morning and welcome to Gateway Church Leeds online services. It's great to have you with us. If you are a regular of Gateway, maybe you've been joining us virtually for a few weeks or maybe just looking in today, it's really great to have you. Um, as you join this online worshipping community, we'd love to hear from you and you can comment on YouTube um, underneath and we'd love to hear what you would like to say there. And why don't you share this link so other people can join in as well. Well, unfortunately, um, having just had a little baby, which was a brilliant thing, Hannah is pretty tired right now and it wasn't really practical for us to anchor today. And we've had a few family challenges as well which felt a bit sad to me because it seems a bit rubbish for me just anchoring on my own. So I was just wondering if there might be someone that could anchor with me. Maybe someone that lots of people in Gateway Church know and is missing quite a lot. And perhaps someone who's been away for a year or so. So I thought I'd try ringing someone to see if they could co-host with me. Let's have a go. Okay, just ringing now. Let's do it on the earpiece. Hello. Hi, Sam. Hi, Jane. How are you doing? I'm really great, thanks. How are you? I'm good. Now, it would be like the middle of the night if this is Sunday morning for you, wouldn't it? Yep. <laughs> it's good to, good to hear from you. Well, we're, we're sort of doing okay-ish. To be honest, it's been a tough a few weeks, although people at Gateway have really supported us well, which we've been really grateful for. But um, it's kind of why I'm ringing you, actually. Hannah... Uh, hasn't really been able to join me in co-hosting this morning. So I was kind of wondering how you would feel about doing this with me. What do you think? Yeah, I'd, yeah, I'd love to help you out, Sam. And you're free now? Yeah, I can do it now. Brilliant. Well, Jane, why don't you welcome everybody? Because you were always so good at doing that. Do you think you can welcome people? <laughs> I can. Thanks, Sam. Um, so... It's really, really great to kind of be with you all um, this morning. Uh, like Sam said, um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jane. And um, until about a year ago, I lived in Leeds and was part of the family there at Gateway. But now I live about 4,000 miles away in America. Um, so yeah, it's really great to sort of feel like I'm being beamed into all your living rooms because for a lot of you, I will have spent some very lovely time in your living rooms before, so I'm really glad to be here again. Um, so I want to say an especially big welcome to anyone who actually hasn't ever stepped foot in the building that Gateway Church meets in. Maybe you found us online and you're enjoying the services. And I want to say a huge welcome to you. That's so cool. And like Sam said, I would encourage anybody um, to share the services because this is an unprecedented time of the church not being in a building but being out and in people's homes. So um, yeah, if you have never been to St Mark's and met face to face all these wonderful people, I would encourage you to stick with it uh, because what you will find when you meet them is an incredible group of people who I love and miss very much. Um, so I hope that you are settled down Possibly with a cup of tea or a bowl of cereal. Maybe you've built yourself a fort from inside which you will watch the service today. Maybe you're in your PJs or maybe you've chosen to put on your very best wedding outfit, hat and all, because we have to make the most of these weird times, don't we? So however I find you this morning, I hope that you really, really enjoy the service. Oh, Jane, that was so good. I, I always remembered you being good at welcoming. I've missed that. Thank you very much. <laughs> I can't believe it's been uh, it's just over a year now since you guys have uh, yeah. have been in the States and uh, we've all missed you a lot. So I thought it would be good, wouldn't it, to have a little catch up with you and the whole family at some point this morning. Would you be up for that? Yes, I'm sure we can cobble something together for you, Sam. Brilliant. Now, at this point, Jane, I'm supposed to tell everyone what's going on in the morning, but I'm guessing it's kind of baby brain, which means I'm not that sure. Do, do you have any idea what we're doing? Can you tell people? Sam, it's a good job that I have kept up to date with these things, isn't it? Good yeah, job. I will I'll sort it out <laughs> for you. So any minute now, we will um, hear from David and Pippa Lloyd, who are going to lead us in some worship. We're going to have some contributions, uh, some testimonies, and encouragements from members of the church. 
and then we just really pray that during that time you will feel God's presence. It, again, it's just a bit weird, isn't it? Um, our church here in America meets uh, like this and it does feel a bit weird, but God still moves. He's bigger than all this. So I just yep. pray that you would really feel his spirit as we worship together. And then we will have some family news and some updates, including hearing from Dave Patterson, who is going to give us an update on food poverty in Leeds at this time. And then uh, Chris Frost will be continuing the preaching series on Revelation and we'll be hearing his um, preach on some of the letters Jesus wrote to the churches. Wow, it sounds like a good morning. I'm, I'm glad I came. And uh, thank yeah. you for helping me there, Jane. Um, I'm glad really you know well. what you're doing. So hopefully, as I said, we can hear from you and the family a little bit later. Um, but I'm going to hand over to David and Pippa now. Let me just pray for us. Father God, uh, we just thank you for our church family. We thank you for those who are also joining us today. And we just pray, God, that as we worship together, we would know your presence, Lord, whether we're doing well, whether we're struggling, that you, we'd know you with us in power today to strengthen. Amen. I am chosen, I am free, I am living for sin, free now forever, pick me up, turn me around, set my feet on solid ground, yours and forever. And God is gonna hold me back, not 
Good morning, Gateway. Since the beginning of the pandemic, I've been very encouraged by some words of Jesus in John chapter 15, where he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He is the source of all, all our life. He then says, my father is the gardener. He's the one who's always looking after us, caring for us. And then he says, every branch in me that bears fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Now, pruning is a painful process. The most fruitful parts of the vine are cut back. It doesn't look the same anymore. I think if it could feel, it would say, I don't want this, I don't like this. Can't you just keep that branch that was so fruitful before? And I believe that what's happening now in the pandemic is a, fruit, a pruning for, for ourselves individually and as a church. Many things that were precious to us, seem to have been lost, at least for now, they've been cut back. And we feel the pain, we feel the loss. In response to the pruning, Jesus says this, remain in me, hold fast to me, keep hold of me. I think sometimes it feels like we're only just holding on. But as we're holding on to him, he is holding on to us too. And he's working to change us through this painful process because there is a wonderful purpose to it. And Jesus makes three promises. First, that we will bear more fruit. The good things we had that seem to have, have gone for now, they're going to come back, they're going to be better, different, greater. Secondly, whatever we ask will be done for us, says Jesus, if we remain in him. Uh, we're going to know a new power in prayer. We're going to see our prayers answered in new ways because of the work he's done in our hearts at this time. And finally, he says, I've told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. And as we come through this, as we see more fruit, we see our prayers answered, we will know a joy that will go way beyond what we've known before. There's great encouragement. Even in these difficult times, let's keep hold of him.
Good morning, Gateway Church. I just felt like God wanted to ask us today, what are you wearing? I don't mean, have you got dressed this morning for church or are you sitting in front of your screen with your pajamas on? But I've been thinking a lot about what we wear, partly because I'm just post-pregnancy and all my pregnancy clothes are way too big and my normal clothes still don't fit, so what do I wear? Had I been thinking on a more serious note about the PPE that's needed across the country and where there hasn't been enough and what do our doctors and nurses and our frontline staff wear when there isn't the things that there should be being provided. The Bible talks a lot about what we should wear. It talks about clothing ourselves in strength and dignity and compassion. But the part that I felt like God wanted to provoke us about this morning was in Ephesians 6. You will know it, the armour of God. Let me remind you what it says. Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armour of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but the rulers and authorities, the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, brothers and sisters, put on the full armour of God, so you may be able to stand your ground. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and all kinds of requests. I believe what God would say to us this morning, what are you wearing today? When you get up each morning, what are you wearing? What are you putting on? There's an encouragement for us to come back to Ephesians 6 and remember that we are able to put on the full armour of God to enable us to stand firm.
never gonna let me down You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. God bless you and a good morning. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 and 16 reads, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace, with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Jesus Christ is our high priest. He lived here on earth. He experienced most of the things that we are experiencing today. So he sympathizes, he understands, he relates with us in any situation that we can go through. This morning, I want you to know that he cares for you. He loves you. That's why the word of God, Paul says, approach his throne of grace with confidence, knowing that he has gone through the things that you can be struggling with today. He relates with our pain. He relates with our lack. He relates with disputes. He had brothers and sisters. He had a mother and a father. I believe at some point they had misunderstandings. He relates with those things. So when we approach him in prayer, we should approach him with confidence knowing that he went through the same things that we may be going through today. If you are feeling low, if you are feeling discouraged, know that the high priest that you are calling relates with that. So 
call him with confidence. Call on him with boldness, knowing that he wants to exchange your weakness into strength. He wants to exchange your troubles with peace. He wants to minister to your body, which might not be well right now. By his stripes, you were healed. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Right now, as we are in this COVID-19, there are effects that has been brought by this virus. He relates with us in those. Call unto him with confidence so that you may receive mercy and find grace in this time of need. Don't hesitate. Call with confidence in Jesus' name. Amen.
Okay, good morning, folks. Uh, I'm here with uh, Dave Patterson from Gateway and also from uh, the Leeds Food Aid Network. I'm going to find out a bit about uh, food provision in Leeds for vulnerable people, uh, particularly at this time. So, Dave, can you just outline what your role is uh, in food provision in Leeds and perhaps particularly what you're doing uh, at this time? So I chair the Leeds Food Aid Network. So I've been part of a whole team of people that have tried to respond very quickly to the situation. So as early as the 18th of March, we were in kind of meetings around establishing a whole kind of welfare support scheme where people could call a helpline and then either receive a delivery or get connected with local food provision um, or even pay for food. So they've actually just started up a new system in Leeds where people can pay for their food if they're just self-isolating. But also we set up a delivery system ourselves with Joseph Battle, he's the son of the former MP uh, Joseph, uh, John Battle. And that's been really, really, um, really helpful. So we've been able to do delivery in these last eight weeks. So lots of different collaboration going on. We've been supporting different initiatives with food. Um, so giving them a little bit of money and then taking food to different people. Some big deliveries have come in from outside nationally to help West Yorkshire. I chair the West Yorkshire Food Poverty Network. So there's been a lot going on. That's great. Um, and so in terms of stuff that's being done specifically, specific initiatives that are going on now, as we speak, sort of a few weeks into this crisis, what's going on right at the moment? And what sort of things are people facing um, at the moment in the Leeds area? So there's a lot of, obviously, people that had poverty before this, and then the kind of coronavirus kind of heightens that poverty. So um, lots of people are struggling. Lots of people have been kind of made uh, unemployed. Some people are on furlough, but even that means you've got a 20% reduction. Um, there are lots of challenges out there for people. And some people just can't get out because they're trying to self-isolate. So it's about having a collaborative system across the city, which means that um, food can get from A to B. The council is spending £20,000 a week on food. Fair share Yorkshire are playing a massive part. The Trussell Trust are playing a massive part, along with Food Revival. And lots of different smaller outlets as well. So we're part of all joining the dots, really. Um, we've taken a lot of referrals ourselves. I've never been so busy having inquiries about food. Um, but yeah, it's, it's bringing people together, I think, to make sure that food system is, is as, as effective as it can be. That's oh, great that there's, uh, there's so many sort of agencies working together and lots of people involved. Um, if you sort of had a message to the, the folk at Gateway about what they could do perhaps to get involved and or what they could be praying for uh, for the rest of this time while people are still in this situation. Please pray for you know all anyone who needs help, but particularly those people who don't have a phone line or don't have the internet. Um, it's really important we actually have some physical spaces where people can go and I think linked with that just pray for us as a church we are starting a new scheme um, this week effectively where we'll be doing meal deliveries so people get three meals a day for three days a week um, working with Mark Armstrong um, and I know Bethan is, is going to be very much part of that and that's going to benefit Woodhouse and Little London so you can look to support that but if you want to know about supporting other stuff in the city like the Leeds North and West Food Bank that we're connected with then just just please just contact me on Facebook or however, and we'll just link you up and get you donating resources in whatever way you can. Thank you also to the church for all the support they gave to Lighthouse um, through uh, food donations um, and all the other support you've given throughout the years, particularly the food bank outlet that we've run in partnership with Triple Trust and the Leeds North and West Food Bank. That's brilliant, Dave. Well, thanks uh, for taking time out of what I know is a really busy time for you now uh, to talk to us. And thank you as well for what all you're doing on behalf of the church. Huh? But to go on behalf of the kingdom. Uh, it's great, so bless you, brother. Take Thank care. You, Tim. Cheers, thanks. Hello everybody, my name's Chris Kandaya and I'm the founding director of Home for Good. Home for Good's always had a very simple vision. We want to see a loving home for every child in the UK care system. And right now, across Leeds, there's a need for more foster families. Because of lockdown, families are under increased challenge and pressure right now. The pressure cooker of living together for at-risk families is proving really difficult. We're seeing a spike across the nation in domestic violence um, referrals. And we know that children are often involved in that. But sadly, because of the lockdown, these children are invisible to the authorities. And so we're expecting after lockdown ends, there to be a surge in child protection referrals. And we want uh, the city to be ready. And therefore we're asking the churches to step forward and find the foster families. It could be you. My family and I, we've been foster parents for the last 14 years and it's been one of the most challenging things we've done but it's been one of the most rewarding. We know that when we care for vulnerable children we're in line with God's heart because in James 1.27 it says, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and blameless is to care for widows and orphans in their distress.
Can you think of anything more distressing than not being able to live with your mum and dad or brothers and sisters and needing another safe place to live? That's exactly the experience of foster children right now, even in the middle of this coronavirus. So churches, let's step forward. Let's show the love and grace of God to all these children that are in need. And, and this will be incredible. It will meet massive need across the city, but it will also honour God. What a lovely combination. Please think about stepping forward, what your family can do to care for these vulnerable children right now. Thank you so much for listening. Talk to you soon. Welcome back. Uh, thank you so much for Pippa and David for leading us so well and all of those contributions, which are so valuable. Um, I think it's one of the things that's really important and helpful at the moment is that if you feel like God is speaking to you uh, for us as a church and you've got something that you would like to share, please do email us into office at gatewayleads.net. We'd love uh, to get those contributions. Do keep them coming. And so good then to hear from Dave Patterson about some of the real challenges uh, with food poverty in Leeds so that we can pray, but also some of the amazing opportunities. I've been astounded in the last couple of days to hear that that special offering we took for the community around our building which we didn't know why that we've been able to use that in several ways to reach out that God has gone ahead of us to bless that community um, even though we can't all be there physically so that's just amazing and let me urge you as well to really consider uh, Krish Kandai's prophetic call to the church uh, about fostering and about supporting children in the city of Leeds if you would like to talk further about that, you could talk to me, you could email, uh, again, the office at gatewayleads.net um, or look on their Home for Good website at the COVID-19 response. Uh, but to please do prayerfully consider that a really important ask. Jane, is there anything uh, important happening for the children today that uh, we need well, to know about? It's funny you should ask that, Sam. So, kids, listen up. So, you have some options now. You can either stay right here for Chris's sermon on Revelation. Reve Revelation is like a crazy fun book in the Bible, so you might want to do that. And if you've got your Bible with you, you can turn to Revelation now. It's the last book of the Bible right at the back, so you can do that. So you can stay here for the sermon, or you can go to the Gateway Families YouTube channel, where you will find loads of fun things to engage with, with your grown-up. Or you can do both of those things. So you can stay here, listen to the sermon, and then later you can go and look on the YouTube channel. So that's really cool, isn't it? Because you get some options as to what you do now. But I don't want you to do any of those things just yet because in a little while, Lucy, Ella and Mim have got a little catch up video and they have videoed themselves telling you about some of the fun things about living in America. So I want you to wait and hang around for that. Um, and then after the service for everybody, kids and adults, we are going to have a Zoom hangout, an opportunity to just um, have some community after the service. So you should have got a link in your bulletin email to the Zoom meeting. But if you haven't, then you can email office at gatewayleads.net and you can do that now and you will be sent a link to go into that Zoom meeting or the world's largest virtual living room, also known as Zoom. Um, so you can go there after the meeting and do some catching up. Brilliant. Thank you, Jane. Um, and I just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone who's given to our offering last week for Joseph Mwila and the churches in Zambia and East Africa. Those of you who were at Powerhouse, we, we heard from Joseph and you, some of you heard from him last week on Zoom, just talking about some of the situation there um, where there is a real starvation uh, issue starting to happen and uh, it was good to be able to pray for them. And we've raised already over £9,000, which is going to go a really long way to helping those churches. So if you would still like to give to that, you can contact lizzie.bird at gatewayleads.net. That's lizzie.bird at gatewayleads.net uh, with the amount you'd like to give. And Lizzie will give you further details on how to contribute that. And uh, mentioning Powerhouse, it was great to see so many there on Tuesday and it was great to gather and pray together. And if you want another opportunity to pray, this time with 
not just Gateway, but thousands of Christians from our broader New Frontiers family and also other movements and churches around the world, there is a global prayer gathering called Enough on the 15th of May at 6pm. And uh, you can check that out by visiting prayersofmany.org. That's prayersofmany.org if you'd like to find out more. Jane. So it's nearly time to um, hear Chris Frost preach for us. But before we do that, it is time to get a little catch up from the whole of the Ogden family. Hi, for those of you who don't know the Ogden family, I'm Jane. This is Andrew. This is Lucy. This is Anna. This is Lynn. And this is us. <laughs> we moved here 12 months ago. We used to live in Leeds and go to Gateway Church. We moved for Daddy's work. Now we live in Bentonville, Arkansas. This is our home. This is our church. We only have three more weeks of school until the summer holidays. When we go to school, we don't have to wear a school uniform. We all ride a yellow school bus to school, just like this one. We've discovered lots of delicious foods like corn dogs and Andy's frozen custard. Yummy! <laughs> and cool it! <laughs> Weather in Arkansas can get really crazy. In one day we can go from beautiful sunshine to hail the sides of five cent coins or even baseballs. This may look like our everyday bathroom, but it's also our tornado shelter. In a tornado warning, we have to put on our helmets and snuggle down in here. Something about America I like is how much dancing I get to do. I like the really short commutes and how much time I get to spend with my family. I like the celebrations that we celebrate here like first friday which is the first friday of every month and the christmas lights switch on one of my favorite things is um, how much time we get to spend outdoors on the trails and at the outdoor pools and uh, socializing outdoors um, and just uh, being on our neighborhood what do i like is bike rides that I get to spend with my family and my friends. We're really happy living in America, but we miss you lots. Bye. Hey, Gateway Church. So I was in B&Q recently and my heart went out to a couple of battered plants. And so I brought them home here to my front garden and planted them. And one of them is doing really good, really well. Um, the other, not so much. In fact, I think it's probably more battered now than it was before. I want us today to look at two churches in the book of Revelation found in Revelation chapter 2 to 3. I want to look at the uh, church in Smyrna and I want to look at the church in Philadelphia. Now, both of these churches have been battered by persecution, yet Jesus' heart goes out to both of them. He affirms them and encourages them. In fact, they're the only two out of the seven churches mentioned in Revelation 2 to 3 that don't receive any critical feedback. Yet to the church in Philadelphia, Jesus says that ultimately the people who have been persecuting them are actually going to come to them and come to faith. They're going to see amazing blossom and fruit. Yet to the church in Smyrna, Jesus says, actually, the suffering and persecution, the battering is going to intensify. And while God is doing amazing things across the world through this Corona experience, um, the reality is many of us will feel a bit like the church in Smyrna at the moment, battered and actually coming to the realization that there's more battering to come. It may be a long time before uh, we can meet together as a church. And so we're going to look today at seven things that we can hold on to when we're being battered, when we're coming under fire, seven lessons we can learn from the church in Smyrna. Hiya. Oh, yeah. Just caught me reading my Bible again. It's just reading Revelation 2, verses 8 
to one. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna, write. The words of the first and the last who died and came to life. I know your tribulation and your poverty, but you are rich. And the slander of those who say that they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested. And for ten days you will have tribulation. Be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who conquers will not be hurt by the second death. So at university, I had the opportunity to go to Jerusalem and visit some Palestinian Christians there to talk about my faith. And I'll never forget entering the room and seeing this bunch of young people all kind of staring at me with kind of really off-putting body languages in, who are you? And uh, I was a bit forthcoming then as a young lad and I said, um, is there something uh, I've done to offend you guys? Are you okay? And they said, Chris, how can we listen to you when you don't know what we've gone through? You don't know the trials and the suffering and the trauma that we've seen in our nation. And I said, I don't, tell me all about it. I want to know. And I find it fascinating that this message to the church in Smyrna opens with these words, I know your afflictions and your poverty. I know your afflictions and your poverty. Jesus knows everything that the church in Smyrna is going through. Jesus knows everything that we're going through when we're being battered. So that's our first point, and it's that Jesus knows. When we are being battered, let's remind ourselves that Jesus really does know. He knows those who are suffering with anxiety at the moment. He knows about that. Those who are struggling in your marriage right now, he knows about that. Those who are struggling with sickness right now, he knows about that. Those who are experiencing grief, he knows. Those who are experiencing poverty right now, maybe you've just lost your job, maybe you're wondering how you're going to cope, he knows. And this isn't some kind of distant head knowledge as if Jesus was reading a book and saying, all right, yeah, they've got afflictions and poverty there. No, no, this is a real knowing and understanding. It's an intimate knowledge because Jesus himself knew afflictions and knew poverty. He was despised and rejected by mankind and he had nowhere to rest his head. Hebrews puts it like this, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses. So what to remember when we're being battered by life storms, Jesus knows. Secondly, we should remind ourselves that there is value, excuse my writing, this is Joe's above, much better than mine, uh, value in trials. There is value in trials. I can still remember the time when I got a phone call uh, from my boss a few years ago now to say that I no longer had a job. And I remember that rush of emotion hitting me as all these kind of worries came to my head. How was I going to provide? And then I think sometime later, these insecurities emerging in me. Um, am I a failure? You know, what, what have I done wrong? And, but looking back, I can see that God has used that trial to make me depend more deeper upon him and also to find more of my identity in him. Listen to what Jesus says to the church in Smyrna. I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. 
I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. Likewise, uh, to the church in Laodicea in Revelation chapter 3, uh, this church sees itself as rich, but God says it is poor. James chapter 2 verse 5 puts it like this. Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised those who love him. Remember those eyes of fire that we looked at in Revelation chapter 1? Those eyes of fire look at the church in Smyrna and they don't see poverty. They see richness. They see richness because the poverty in the church there pointed to a sufficiency of Jesus. And so we too should consider the batterings of life in some ways as a richness to us. James puts it like this, that actually we should consider all trials that we face pure joy. Why? Well, because we know that the testing of our faith produces perseverance and perseverance makes us mature and complete, not lacking anything. So what should we remind ourselves when we're being battered by the storms of life? Number one, Jesus knows. Number two, there is value in trials. And number three, not to fear. Not. To fear. So if you remember the story of the disciples in the boat where Jesus says, let's go over to the other side. But then this large storm comes and the disciples panic and they, they say to Jesus who's asleep, teacher, don't you care if we drown? And Jesus, what does he do? He, he calms the storm and says, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? You know, when battering comes, our natural tendency is to panic. Um, just like Lance Corporal Jones from the 1970s BBC comedy, Dad's Army. Don't panic, don't panic. Right. Don't, don't panic, you're all right. <laughs> when battering comes, our natural tendency is to go into panic, just like Lance Corporal Jones does in that clip. So Jesus says to the church in Smyrna, don't be afraid of what you are about to suffer. Don't be afraid of what you are about to suffer. It's so important when battering of this life comes that we take some deep breaths and we remind ourselves we don't need to fear. Why? Well, because Jesus, the one speaking to them, is the one who has died and come to life again. He has endured all beatings, all death, and he has emerged victorious. And we are inseparably and eternally in him. We're in Christ. And so when you're battered by life storms, remember not to fear because you're in Christ. You're in the victorious one. Several years ago now, as a family, we were robbed, which was just a horrible experience. And I think if I'm going to be honest, I went a bit like Lance Corporal Jones. Don't panic. Don't panic. And I uh, started to secure the house with new lights, new alarms. Uh, new fences. Um, but I remember praying with some friends and uh, one of my friends, Chris, he said, I feel as if the Lord would say to you, don't let Satan rob you of your peace. And suddenly I was alerted to a spiritual reality behind a physical event. 
And the same happens here in the message to Smyrna. Jesus says, the devil will put some of you in prison. The devil will put some of you in prison. So let's remember number four, that Satan is real. Satan is real. It's so important that when we experience battering in life, that we remember we have an enemy prowling around like a lion. He's not the lion. He's like a lion that wants to destroy us, that wants to destroy you and destroy me. It's important we remind ourselves that our battle is not against flesh and blood, and that the very situation we are in, the very battering, may well be instigated by the devil himself. And so we should stand firm against his tactics. Fifth thing I want to say when we experience life's battering is to remind ourselves to pass the test. To pass the test. In the book of uh, Job in the Old Testament, we're introduced to a travesty. Uh, There's this great guy called Job and um, uh, he's a great guy, a lovely kind of guy, but he loses everything that he loves. He loses his property. He loses much of his family. He loses even his own health. And if we were to meet him, we might just think, what a sad case. That is devastating. But in the book of Job, we're Uh, if you like, brought behind the scenes, the chapter one and two, where we see what's really going on. We see that what is happening to Job is not random, but a specifically designed satanic test to see if Job is just playing the system, uh, obeying God just so he can get what he wants from him, or to see if Job is actually following God because he loves him. What does the message to the church in Smyrna say? Well, it says the devil will put some of you in prison to test you. The devil will put some of you in prison to test you. What is being tested? Well, the very next command to the church in Smyrna is be faithful. Be faithful. So, Remember that some of life's battering could well be instigated by Satan himself. Therefore, pass the test by number six, being faithful. Being faithful. Let's be like Joseph. Remember Joseph in the Old Testament, sold by his brothers, falsely accused by Potiphar's wife. He ends up in prison. But what does he do there? He continues to interpret people's dreams. If you like, Joseph is faithful in lockdown. Let's continue to be faithful in our lockdown. Let's continue to be faithful to our Lord at this time. Let's continue to uh, practice those disciplines that we did when we weren't in lockdown. Let's continue to seek him and seek to be holy with all of our lives. And then we too will get the promise. Let's read this together. Uh, Revelation chapter 2. Verse 10, do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you and you will suffer persecution for 10 days. There's a limit on it. 
Be faithful. Be faithful. Even to the point of death. And I will give you life as your victor's crown. So number seven, what should we remind ourselves of? Well, a crown is coming. A crown is coming. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm missing a bit of a live sport at the moment. And uh, maybe some of you have gone back to look at old sporting events. I know I have, very sad. One of the photos I came across uh, this week was the Colombian Oscar uh, Figuero winning the weightlifting gold in Rio at the last Olympics. And take a look at this picture of him. And Jesus is saying to the church in Smyrna here, Remind yourselves of that glorious moment when an athlete wins the crown. The church in Smyrna would have been uh, very used to seeing Olympic Games and, and uh, big sports festivals. They, they would have known what it was to win a crown. And Jesus is saying, Take, remind yourselves of that glorious moment when an athlete wins the crown, the prize. See the glory, see the joy, see the relief and see the delight in their eyes. And Jesus wants to remind you and me and everyone watching today that for those who are faithful to him, they will receive a crown of perfection from Jesus. That will be like that moment an athlete receives his crown, except the glory will not fade. The joy will not fade. The relief will not fade. The delight will not fade. It will last forever. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17 puts it like this. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. Remember, when you're being battered, a crown is coming. This life and everything around us is not all there is. Revelation helps us see behind the curtain. There's a very real spiritual reality and it's coming to earth. And if we are faithful to Christ, if we look forward to his coming, we will receive the crown that he promises. Let me pray for us. Father, I thank you that although in this life we experience many different batterings, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you know exactly what we're going through right now. Father, I thank you that although we often can't understand it or comprehend it, there is value in the trials that we go through in this life. Lord, I pray you'd help us as a church family not to fear in this season, knowing that you're in control, knowing that you're the one who's defeated death. Father, I pray you'd help us to realize that Satan is real and we are in a spiritual battle. Help us to pass the test that we find ourselves in well. Help us to be faithful in this time and this season and help us, Lord, to look forward to that day when we receive the crown for doing just that. In Jesus' name, amen. Abounds in deepest 
waters, your sovereign hand will be my guide. Where fear, where fail, and fear surrounds you, never fail, and you won't stop. Thank you, Chris. Today, we just want to take a few moments as we're gathered virtually together as a community to remember and pray for those who are particularly struggling. We want to pray for those who are part of Gateway community, those who are looking in maybe today, and also those in our broader communities and in the nation. And just take a moment to recognise um, that there are those and it may be you who are feeling battered, who are feeling disorientated, who are grieving, struggling, anxious, struggling with depression, whatever it may be. And we want to stand with you, even though we can't be with you. And so we're going to take a moment just to be still, uh, to lift our prayers to God and to recognise that. 
So I'm going to, in a moment, just light this candle as a way of representing us holding our prayers up to God together. We believe that God hears our prayers and we're going to do that now. And then there's going to be a brief moment of silence. And I'm going to read a psalm. And you may want to be thinking right now and praying for others. Or you may want to be bringing yourself before God, knowing that you're struggling to go on. And we stand with you in that. So let's have a moment of silence. Uh, there is deliberate uh, space now. Uh, your television isn't broken. Um, and then I will lead us by reading a psalm together. Lord God, we recognise that this is a tough time for many right now. In various ways and for various reasons, there are struggles. And we pray for those right now who are feeling battered, feeling disorientated, grieving and anxious. I pray for those who are watching who they know that this is them right now. And Lord, there are not many words we can say right now. We don't want to say anything flippant. But we pray for your strength and we pray for your breakthrough in those situations. Give them strength to hold on and to look to you, Jesus. We recognise, Jesus, that you know what we're going through. Amen. Let me just put that down for a moment just to read a few verses from Psalm 18. It says, I love you, O Lord my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge. My shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised and I am saved from my enemies. The cords of death encompassed me. The torrents of destruction assailed me. The cords of shale entangled me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. To my God, I cried for help. From his temple, he heard my voice and my cry to him reached his ears. And that's our prayer as together we lift up our words to God that he hears and he answers. You know, as Christ's body on earth, although we cannot be with you, we are standing with you if that's you today. But if you feel like you'd like to chat or you'd like further prayer, we're doing something different at the end of the service today. So the link that we usually have been using for a Zoom social, there's three options today if you click on that link, three rooms. One, you can continue to be prayed for or to pray for others and so there's going to be a prayer room there. So you can go to that by clicking on the link that you find in the bulletin. Or you can have, there's an option to play a game. You might want to get into the room and play charades or Pictionary or something that you'd like to play over Zoom. Or just the opportunity to have a cup of tea and chat with people. So there's several options on it today. We're trying that out. If you're new, even for the first time today and you want prayer, but you don't have that link, you can email office at gatewayleads.net and we will send you that link. So if you're new to us, um, it's been good to have you with us. We hope that one day we will be able to invite you into our building at St Mark's to meet you properly. But in the meantime, we'd love to invite you to continue to uh, join with us online. We'll be here this same time, same place next week. And if there's ways that we can help you, either uh, spiritually or even practically, please email, you guessed it, office at gatewayleads.net. We'd love to hear from you and hear about your journey. 
Next week then, Tim Green will be continuing our series in Revelation with the last sermon on the letters. And don't forget that after most of our sermons, a few days later, we'll also be posting onto our YouTube page a Go Deeper section where we're unpacking further the scripture that was explained on Sunday. And I know Chris has recorded some great stuff for this week. So don't forget to head over to Zoom if you want to pray, be prayed for or just have some social time with people. God bless you today and this week. Goodbye. Gateway Church Leads. To connect with us, go to www.gatewayleads.net. Find us on Facebook and YouTube or email office at gatewayleads.net.